Greetings to all. We celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We begin our liturgy by calling to mind our sinfulness and asking the Father's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. who show the light of your truth to those who go astray so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will achieving the end for which I sent it, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. God. Will you? 
flowing river brims over to prepare the grain, the seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest, and thus you provide for the earth, you drench it Soften it with showers, you bless its growth. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You crown the year in your bounty, abundance flows in your pathways. In pastures. It flows, the hills are guarded with joy, the seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest, the meadows clothed with flocks, the valleys are decked with wheat. They shout for joy as yes, they sing the seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Our second reading today is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the suffering of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We all know that creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we await for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. According to you, o Lord. Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a man who was feeling very ill, and uh, his wife and he, when they went to the doctor, he was examined. And uh, after the, uh, the doctor examined the man, he called the wife into the church, his office to speak with her privately. And he says, I've got to be honest with you, you know, your husband's a very, very sick man, and uh, the only way he can recover is that you really have to now now I go out of your way to make sure that he's always comfortable. You've got to make sure you're going to cook three healthy meals every day for him. And all his needs are going to come first. Don't do anything to upset him because otherwise, otherwise he, he won't be able to, he won't make it. 
But if you can do that, I'm sure you'll be able to live. And uh, the wife thanked the doctor, and she went out to see her husband there in the examining room. And then man says, well, what, what did the doctor say? What did the doctor tell you? And the wife said, sir, the doctor says that you're gonna die. <laughs> That's a story to remind me, of course, that the, the, the man in her, he was suffering. He was, he, was, he was very ill, he needed some help with that. But suffering is really a part of what life is about. In the reading from St. Paul, the sufferings of the present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. And it comes to mind the quote by St. Augustine, our hearts are restless till they rest in thee. St. Paul is assuring us how important it is that we realize that the sufferings we have in this present age, the illnesses that we have, the pain, and whatever it is, psychological, emotional, physical, that this pain is, is gonna be offered to the glory of God because, as we say, the present time or nothing, that the glory to be revealed for us. All creation is going in labor pains, but we ourselves are the first fruits of the Spirit. We wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. Again, that reminds me of St. Paul stressing how important it is we put faith in Christ and his promises of eternal happiness and glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We bring our petitions to our Heavenly Father. Please respond to the intercessions, Lord, hear our prayer. For a deep relationship with Christ, present in the Eucharist, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those men and women who minister to God's people in the church throughout the world, may the gospel message they preach be received with joy and take root in the hearts of all the faithful. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, may they be committed to work together effectively to bring about a just sharing of our world resources making the justice and peace of God a reality for all of the world's people. We pray, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our created world, may we be aware of God's revelation through the created world around us, promote respect for it, and work to protect it for future generations. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, May our Lord Jesus Christ, who is ever present to us in the sacrament of the Eucharist, reawaken our belief in his presence in the Eucharist and deepen our understanding of love for and living out this great mystery. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from physical illness, mental anguish, or spiritual turmoil, and all those who care for them, may Christ comfort them with his bountiful mercy and compassion. We especially remember Elliot and Arthur Shooter, Frank Bayro, Nancy Becker, Madeline Finger, Renee Brennan, Barbara Kewen, and John Edo. And for all those who have died, may they be gathered into the eternal kingdom of light, happiness, and everlasting peace with Christ, especially Chris Faber. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our needs held in the silence of our hearts and for those written in the book of petitions in the Eucharistic Chapel, including Charles Dennis, Bruce Duran, Lorraine Rito, Rich Keller, Helen F. Saturo, and Deacon Tom, Elmaya Custodio, Luis Mateo, Domino and Forrest Crux, Dick Rosenbeck, James J., James G., John and Catherine Frail. We pray, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, may our prayers increase our love for you and one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work us human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Hey, my sisters and brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for the and good of all his church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring an ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom, you, who, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you in a joyful celebration we acclaim holy. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope. Ronald, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be court heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord with you always. And with your spirit. We offer Santa peace to one another. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, and to go in peace. Thanks, God. Everybody, this is Louie, Gracie, and Father Bob coming to say hello and hope everybody's doing well. I have a little story about these uh, these these parents. They had these twin boys, but the one the, well, one was an ultimate optimist, the other one was a pessimist, and they and the. the of course, the optimist always saw the bright side of things, never really was real, very idealistic about everything. And the pessimist, of course, always looking, always looking on the dark side of things. Things are always going wrong. So they thought, this isn't so good. So uh, they took him to a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist suggested what we're gonna do. You see, you got this optimist he has to face reality. His life isn't always the best thing. You know, there's always been challenges and, and hardships in life. And you got to teach the pessimist that there's a bright side to think, that things are going to, things, things will get better all the time. You know, there's always a, a bright side of life. So a psychiatrist sets up a little, a little plan for them. He's people in one room. He puts on a whole bunch of beautiful new toys. The plan was that, uh, uh, 
the pessimists to go in there with all the toys and brighten up and see how nice things are going and uh, he'll have a lot of fun playing with the toys, change his outlook. And in the other room, he, put the other, he puts a pile of horse manure through the whole room. And uh, he says he's gonna open the door and put the optimist in there and he's gonna say that life is kind of you kind of crap you're not good all the time you know things aren't always gonna be good so he puts the one in the the, the pessimist in the room with all the toys and the optimist in the room with all the manure and he goes and checks on them he goes to the first to the pessimist and he's looking, the pessimists are just looking down like this. He says, what, all these toys that you don't want to play? He says, oh, I'm just going to try to break them right away. I'll probably get tired of them, and they're just going to fall apart. And he just not, didn't work at all. So he goes to see how the optimist is doing with all the manure in there. And, he's, and he walks in there, and instead of the optimist being very dejected and sad and looking at this horse manure, he finds him, he's... He's going through the horse manure, digging through it furiously, a big smile on his face, really, really happy. He says, he says, he says what's the matter? What, what are you doing there, son? He says, well, I figure with all this horse manure here, there's got to be a pony buried here in all this mess here. <laughs> anyway, I'm out of treats. Hope all is well. God bless everybody.